for hobby purposes you need of course a good quality power supply and there are many power supply videos on my youtube channel but anyway i publish this again the reason is that this power supply has served me for approximately 15 years uh, i made a kind of little mistake in the past by not mounting the the 2N305 here on a heatsink so it burned out yesterday but I did it all over again rewired the whole circuit etc etc and perhaps it's interesting to show here the power supply transformer uh, here is the transistor that does the whole job the 2N305 important to tell that the 2N305 when you want to make it has to have an amplification factor say a beta uh, between 50 and 70 sometimes uh, when you order 2N305s uh, of all kinds of sources even reliable sources their amplification factor when you measure it with a transistor tester does not meet 50 uh, times or 70 times uh, sometimes they even uh, have a low uh, amplification factor of approximately say 8 or 10 or whatever so uh, I'm testing the circuit now at this moment in more or less a shortcut situation here with that automotive lamp it takes the, the uh, power supply really to its extremes it's one a pair here now at the moment the uh, power transistor gets very hot uh, of course here the whole uh, uh, box gets very hot because uh, the aluminium here acts as a heatsink but anyway that's kind of normal want to give some tips when you want to make this circuit at first let's look at the schematic this is the schematic it's very simple uh, you can use a 24 volt uh, transformer AC out say it has to give out approximately 1 ampere or 1.2 ampere <coughs> and you will see that when you rectify it with a bridge rectifier uh, there is a positive here of approximately 30 volts then there is the smoothing capacitor it's now uh, 2200 microfarad better is 4700 microfarad but anyway no big problem I use always a fuse in the primary and a fuse in the secondary and the fuse in the primary is here 250 milliampere that depends of course on the transformer that you use uh, in say for instance 110 volt AC input the fuse must be at least uh, that's that's what I think must be doubled to approximately 500 milliampere these fuses by the way it's 2 ampere stay the same in that case also when you supply it via a 115 or 120 volts AC source safety earth is not used here but when you want to use it you can connect it here the safety wire to the minus of the circuit I've used here a bridge rectifier and well that's perhaps interesting to show it's here of course this black black box it can handle approximately 25 ampere at 1000 volts well you can say that's completely nonsense and it is uh, it's not on a heat sink here but anyway uh, when you want to make a kind of durable power supply that doesn't burn out easily 
during experiments with electronics. Use a uh, bridge rectifier block with these properties. Uh, the price is almost the same compared to a bridge rectifier <coughs> uh, that has less good properties in terms of voltage that it can handle or in terms of current that it can handle. Uh, the 2 entry of F5 is say the, the, the transistor that does the job it can get very hot and I have already talked about the this, uh, that a heat sink is necessary. So a 355 on a heat sink, primary and secondary fuse, and when you want to mount fuses, it's a good idea to make the say second fuse on the front so that you can easily change it. When say the current gets too high, uh, the fuse burns out, etc. etc. It's now 2 ampere, that's quite high. You can also choose 1 ampere, uh, it gives somewhat more safety. But on the other hand, when you make a shortcut, and when you are developing an electronic circuit, could be that the fuse burns out, and that's not necessary. Here is um, where it all works. There are two 3K resistors here. They both are 0 0.5 watt uh, resistors. Together they make approximately uh, 1.5K uh, resistor. You can of course also use a 1.5K resistor here. Uh, in that case use say a 1 watt type and here is a 22k potentiometer with which you can pinch off the voltage to the base or give it a higher voltage and that means that the output goes from approximately 0 volts to approximately 30 volts at approximately 1 ampere or um, lower. Uh, I'm gonna show how to make a shunt. This is important. Uh, this is the so-called Miller circuit. Uh, here we have the base and there is a capacitor on from base to ground and you may amplify say the effective capacitor that the, the electronic circuit that is connected here at the output that it sees with the amplification factor of the transistor. So in this case 200 microfarad multiplied by 70. That's a lot. Not 7000 microfarad but the, the double value. Anyway, that's very very important. Here is uh, say an end capacitor. That's important. Uh, of course you never know what kind of circuit here will be connected. Uh, in the range of 6 volt or 3 volt up to 30 volt. So this is a kind of stabilizing element. 100 microfarad and 100k. The shunt uh, is a piece of wire. I have made a video about it. I will publish that. How to make a shunt. It's simply a piece of wire. You can see it here. This is the shunt that shunts the 500 micro ampere uh, meter, making it a meter that can uh, display uh, currents between, say, approximately 50 milliampere and 1.5 ampere. I have uh, updated in the past uh, videos about how to make a shunt, such a shunt. And I will do that again today or tomorrow. Uh, well, here are again the tips. The circuit is useful for audio circuits because the ripple is extremely low. Now the output is shortcut, more or less, with that lamp. It's here. That 
fierce lamp. That means that uh, the ripple is at its highest. And we read here that on this scale the ripple is 10 millivolts. But when we go back and say to a somewhat lower output current, you can see that the ripple gets down very, very substantially. So, in fact, this is for an audio circuit more or less a no ripple situation. That means that the hum that you can expect when you make audio circuits, uh, when you make audio circuits, uh, the issue of hum is very, very uh, prominent, important. And this means in for audio circuits that there is, say, no hum. Almost no hum. And say, when you go back to an even smaller voltage, you can see that the hum completely disappears. I have set my scope now really to the utmost amplification. And this is say the normal noise that comes out of a power supply. So this se se uh, tells us something about the quality of this power supply and it means that this, the quality of this power supply is very high. That's not my opinion, only my opinion, but you can measure it, test it, measure it, etc. etc. So that was more or less all to tell. Pink connections of the 3055. The ripple, I've told I've talked about it. Uh, the meter, uh, how to shunt it, I've talked about it. Uh, the effective uh, uh, say ripple rejection, the effective more or less endless output capacitor that the circuit sees that is connected to this power supply is, uh, I've talked about it, etc, etc. So not so much more to tell. Thanks for watching. Use this circuit uh, many times during the past, since the 1980s. Now I had to say uh, uh, repair it in a certain way, redo it, etc. etc. So let's pan over somewhat. Here is the primary fuse in the 230 volt um, part of the transformer. Here is the secondary fuse. And I have by purpose, I do by purpose always that that secondary fuse is not connected from the smoothing supply capacitor but directly from the AC to the uh, here here directly from the AC here to the AC uh, electrodes of the bridge rectifier. Reason is that when the bridge rectifier burns out in an extreme strange case, this fuse will protect it. Will protect the situation. So a very simple circuit. Many things to tell. Here is the one and only earth connection here on the underside to the aluminum. Make a very, very fierce connection with a bolt and a screw or whatever uh, to keep the, say, the internal resistance here in the chassis very low. Thanks for watching.